So I've just seen the Panasonic GH7 announcement. It is really, really cool as well. I feel like this, this camera is almost at capacity now. Uh, so included is internal ProRes RAW. Finally a RAW into a camera that isn't sort of over £3,000. Uh, we've also got everything that you had in the G9 has made its way into the GH7 as well. I suspect it's the same sensor. The thing is people are going to say, well, how are they pushing the bar? But I really think these cameras are almost at capacity. The announcement was a bit shorter than I expected it, it, expected it to be. And I think a couple of areas where they could have maybe pushed this further is I think they could do open gate in 50 and 60p as well. That's not made clear if you could do that unless I, unless I missed it. This has all just happened. There was one thing though that was absolutely amazing and that was the fact that they have done a licensing deal with Ari. Ari? Ari. Uh, it's a log profile basically. Ari Log C3. In a licensing deal with Ari, we are thrilled to announce the addition of the legendary Log C3 profile to the GH7. This was, uh, I, I turned my camera off, I was doing a live reaction, but it was mostly me just staring at the screen. But that was the one moment where I had like a proper reaction. I thought it was really, really cool. So being able to shoot in that sort of ARRI log profile is going to be really, really cool. And I think that really, uh, this term gets banded around a lot, but I think that is a bit of a game changer. Now, I've been going through the comments, I've been in the forums, I've been talking to people, and I want to get my point across on a few things. So every time I do a video, I keep talking about how I want to do wildlife videography, and when I'm not in my currently annihilated office, which is just jammed with stuff all over the place, it's like Frankenstein's lab, I'm trying to work on my setup using the camera I'm currently recording on, the S5 II. However, there's two areas where I'm struggling with this camera in particular, one is it does a crop in at 50 or 60p, which if you're trying to compose your shots can be annoying. I find it almost better to just use it as like a Super 35 camera and I'll try and make a video about that. Now this video does amazing, this camera does amazing work, I absolutely love it. But ideally I was holding out for an S1 Mark II. Saying that, I do think that the recent announcements by Panasonic is probably a good indication that those will come this year. I, I reckon October time you'll see that. And where I'm going with this is the other problem is that this camera, when you attach a full frame lens, it's huge and my back is still aching from carrying this camera, a Sigma 150 to 600, my tripod, and because I've got the S5 II instead of the X, because I've got an Atomos Ninja, um, I'm bringing the Atomos Ninja and a couple of batteries, so it's it's a lot of weight to bring out. Not only is it a lot of weight, but out there in the British elements, you know, we've got more things, that, the more stuff you've got, the more that can go wrong. Now, I used to shoot on a GH5S and a G9, and I was saying in the comments, I think I've produced some of my favourite work on those cameras, and had mo uh, some of my favourite times with those cameras in my downtime. Uh, trekking up mountains in Wales, sightseeing. The thing is, you can take them out and you can have them all day. And I used to carry both of my GH5S uh, or my G9 when I was using them, not at the same time, it just in my hand all the time. Whereas now I, I usually use like a camera strap, which is why one of the strong points of these Micro Four Third cameras. Now people think that having this crop sensor is going to come at a loss in quality. It doesn't. But what you have to do is tamper your expectations and not expect that you're going to get the same quality as a full frame camera. And that's not worse cam uh, quality. It's You're going to have different characteristics. It's better to think of these not as crop sensor cameras. They're just different cameras with different sensors. The main benefit really is that size and versatility. And that's really, really the most exciting thing. And it's... It's one thing to have your head in the books all the time and, and looking at all the theory, but you really got to get out in the field and some people would have done that and just not got on with it. Whereas me, I only changed from a practical standpoint in that I was doing wedding videos at the time and the low light performance of a Micro Four Thirds was becoming a bit of a hampering point. It did a little bit with wildlife. However, with wildlife, 
what I've kind of come to expect since all those years ago from swapping over is when it gets dark, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, the footage is just not that good. It's just it's just too dark for anything. It's it's too dark for the human eye, probably too dark for a camera as well. Saying that, you you are going to be able to shoot a little bit longer just after those sort of twilight hours. So it does make a difference. So I weigh it up like this. Do you go for the ultimate sort of in low light performance and noise performance or do you save some of the weight and you can actually perform longer? It's entirely up to you. Either way, I think this is a really exciting uh, announcement by Panasonic. I'm really excited where the camera industry is going at the moment in general. Canon have just released a an amazing new camera by the look of it as well. Blackmagic have the Pixis on the way. I almost very closely brought a Blackmagic cinema camera 4K, uh, 6K uh, because of the crazy offer that Blackmagic had. But I'm invested in Lumix and as someone who's thinking about going, uh, going deeper and deeper into the wildlife side of things and I'm really taking weight and versatility into consideration, I'm thinking, do I go back to Micro Four Thirds? I've been trying to be strict with myself about holding out for the S1 Mark II, but I've just got a feeling it's not gonna be within a reasonable price range. And you have to be honest about what your budget are, what your budget is. And I've got a feeling it's gonna be 3,000, 3,500, probably gonna be a bit less than the competition, but it's gonna be feature packed and amazing and that's great, and I've got lenses and stuff, but I can't afford a £3,500 camera, but I could possibly afford the GH7, and having used full frame cameras, micro four third cameras, uh, APS-C cameras like the Canon R7 and the Canon R50, honest to God, I know and I'm confident in my own skills as a creator that I can get good footage out of any camera the only time a camera is a professional camera is when it's in the hands of a professional and I do consider myself a professional. So if I get the GH7, I will make the most of it. I will work to its, its strengths and I'll try to overcome any of its weaknesses. And I think there's a heck of a lot of strengths. Anyway, I think this has gone on long enough. I'm really, really excited. I've chucked a whole lot in here because there's a bunch of stuff I've wanted to talk about. But yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think this is exciting? Um, I think it's very, very exciting. Um, but yeah, um, I'll try to be a bit quicker on the next video. As for now, I'll catch you all next time. See ya.